Hey everybody, what's up? Mike here. In today's video, I'm going to walk you guys through how to complete the starting point machine on Hack the Box called Meow. So I'm going to show you how to complete it from start to finish. Before we get into that, I just want to say I apologize for the mess that you see here and potentially the echo you might be hearing. I know I hear it. Typically, I have a nice full setup in my studio. Right now, it's in the middle of kind of undergoing some remodeling. Let's jump right into Meow. I'm sorry, are you saying Meow? So the first thing we're gonna do is log into Hack the Box and then head over to Starting Point right here. From there, we're going to find our machine Meow right here. Now, if I click this little arrow, this will expand the details for that machine. Now, first thing I want to mention is you see these tags right here. This is a nice little indicator of what you have in store for you in this machine. I always like to just take a glance because it'll give you some hints into what you're going to deal with. So we can see here that Telnet, Network, Protocols, Reconnaissance, Weak Credentials, and Misconfiguration are some of the tags associated with this machine. Now, if we go down further, we see that it kind of wants us to go through these ordered steps. Now, obviously, I've already completed this quite a while ago, actually. But in this case, you'll start here at this first step, which is connect. Now, you have two options when you use Hack the Box. And this is not specific to this challenge, by the way. This is all the Hack the Box, pretty much. The first one is right here. You can use OpenVPN. You can download that client. And you can use OpenVPN to VPN into the Hack the Box network from your laptop, from your desktop, whatever the case is, from a virtual machine. Now, the benefit of that is that you have the same system to work with. Your attacking system will be the same every time you log in to hack the box. So you can keep all your favorite tools, all of that stuff. The downside is, well, you're logging into a network where people like to hack. So personally, I would recommend doing that from a virtual machine, maybe just loading up a virtual machine on your system with something like VirtualBox or VMware Fusion if you're on a Mac, and use that to install Kali Linux and OpenVPN and then VPN from that. Now, if you choose to go that route, there's a great lab access guide right here. You can click on that. It'll walk you through how to do that. I'm not going to be covering that in this video. Now, the option I like personally is called Pwnbox, and it's basically a browser-based virtual machine hosted by Hack the Box that you can use. So it's a kind of a pre-configured environment that you can use to get up and running quickly. I like this because you can do this from any system and when you're done, it'll just spin down and you can spin a new one up later. Now, the one gotcha here, as you can see here, it says free two hours of Pwnbox. So you have to upgrade to a paid membership if you want unlimited access to this. Whether or not that's something you want to explore, I'll leave that to you guys. But in this case, I'm gonna show you how to do it with the Pwnbox method. So the first thing we're going to do is click on this little tile right here. It'll pop up here and it says connect to Pwnbox and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Now it'll take a couple of minutes for this to provision. Keep in mind, you're essentially spinning up a virtual machine right now. So I'll probably pause the video here. Once it's done, you'll see a link that'll say open desktop and that's what we'll be doing. So I'm gonna leave it right here for just a minute. All right, so as we see here, it did finish provisioning this. Now, I want to show you two things about this. The first one is if you hit open desktop, we'll click that. That launches us into the Hack the Box viewer, and here you go. We have an instance of Kali Linux here. We can get to the command line by clicking this little terminal right here, and there we go. We're logged into our Pwnbox instance. Now, I'm going to go back to Hack the Box, so I want to show you something else kind of cool here. If you go up here and you click View Instance Details, and you expand that, you'll get a password right here as well as a username. Now, don't worry, this password will reset every time you have this box, so this is not my permanent password. This is just your temporary password for this instance. If you click on it, though, you'll see it says Copied to Clipboard. Now, if you go down to the bottom here, you can hit Open SSH Terminal, and you can use that username and password to SSH into this Pwn box from your own laptop. I like this method personally because I oftentimes don't need the full GUI interface from the browser. I'll just open up a single terminal and do my work from there. Now in this case though, we're gonna keep it simple and we'll go with open desktop, so I've already got that opened. Now let's go ahead and click off of this right kind of menu here for Pwnbox. And you should see normally that this connect to hack the box will have changed. 
sometimes it's kind of finicky, sometimes it doesn't want to. Oh, you see, as I was talking, it actually changed. Sometimes if it doesn't, you might need to refresh or reopen the menu. Eventually it will change. Just fool with it until you see this. In our case though, it allowed us to pass that first step. Now the next step is to spawn our target machine, in this case, Meow. You have to do this because it will spin up its own instance of your target every time you do this. So we'll click on spawn. Just like with our Kali pwn box that we just spun up, this will take another minute or two. We'll know that it's good once we see the IP address for our instance of this machine, which will pop up right about here. So we'll give that a minute or two and then we'll come back. All right, so our Meow instance provisioned successfully, we see that IP address here. Keep in mind, you have to be either connected via VPN to hack the box or be using Pwnbox to be able to reach this IP. If I tried to ping this from my own local laptop, it just won't work. So just keep that in mind. Um, now, all you have to do is click on it and you'll see it says IP copied to your clipboard. Now, if we go over to the hack the box viewer, we can go here and let me show you something. Let me right click and go to paste. And you see, I was able to paste that IP. If for some reason you're not able to, one of the kind of just little quick tricks I do is I'll just paste it in the bar and then I'll just leave it there. So that way I can keep referencing what the actual IP was. All right, so in our case though, what we wanna start with first is just making sure the host is alive. So I'll just try a basic ping to that IP. That's 10.129.1.17. Okay, and I'll do control C to stop that. So we see the host is up. Now the next tool that we can use to further get some details and enumerate or scan this system is Nmap. And before we do that, I wanna show you one little trick here. We can actually, I'll expand this a little bit. If you ever have too much kind of mess on your screen, just type clear and hit enter. And that will just clear kind of the buffer so you don't have all that stuff kind of, you know, keeping your screen too busy. All right, from there we'll use Nmap. Now for Nmap, we're going to do Nmap and I like to do dash V, that's for verbose. So that'll just give us more detail on the scan. Next, I like to do lowercase s, capital C, so that's for scripts. So that will run a bunch of default scripts as part of Nmap that will look for kind of basic potential vulnerabilities or exploits, that kind of thing, with, you know, depending on different services and that kind of thing. So it's just a good idea to run it because it will give you more information essentially. Um, next, I like to do dash N. What this does is when we do our scans against our system, so in this case, that IP address 10.129.117, it will by default try to resolve that IP to a DNS name. We don't wanna do that. We're in a closed lab environment. There's no DNS entry that we know of for that. So it'll just take longer for your scan if you don't do this dash N. All right, the next thing we need to do is just put in the IP of our system, which is 10.129.1.17, and we'll hit enter. Now from there, it's gonna take a minute or so. You'll see here where it says initiating NSE, that's this dash SC, that's the script starting to run. So if you didn't run that, then it wouldn't say that, it would actually be almost done. The thing that we most care about here is two things I wanna call out. Um, the first we see discovered open port 23 slash TCP. We can also see it down here. This is a listing of all of our open ports. We see only 23 is open and that's Telnet. So Telnet is used to log into VMs typically. Telnet or now SSH is the more modern version essentially. Um, but we see Telnet is open. The one thing I wanna mention before we proceed further though is right here, look at this. When we ran that Nmap scan, it said scanning our IP address or our, our target's IP address, Meow's IP address, it says 1,000 ports. Now here's the problem. There are 65,535, I believe, ports uh, potentially available, right? I think it might be, I might be off a digit, but anyway, there's a lot, right? There's 65,000 ports. Now we're only scanning 1,000, so why is that? If I up arrow to see the command we use, by default, if you don't specify the ports in your nmap command, it will only do the 1000 most common ports. So if you wanted to scan all potential ports, which will take a while, what you could do is right here, you can insert a dash P dash. 
So by doing that, that will scan from 1 to 65,535. Now, like I said, that will take quite a while. Another alternative is you could actually do a dash P space, and then you could specify, for example, an individual port. So this command right here will just scan port 21. So if I were to run that, that's all it would do is check for that one port and nothing else. But in our case, we don't care about that. I just wanted to show you guys a little trick there. What we do see is Telnet is here, is open. So that's interesting. Now, the first thing I wanna share with you guys before we get into this is the best tip I have for you getting into ethical hacking or pen testing is to be curious. A lot of people, including myself, I'm very much guilty of this. I will sometimes look at things and go, okay, well, Telnet's open. I, I don't have a username or password. What's the point? But you need to train your brain to say, well, what if? What if they had default credentials? What if they had no password configured? You need to ask yourself these and then check them. So in our case, let's clear our screen right here. Let's try to Telnet into this system. So we'll do Telnet. And now, if you're not sure the, the syntax here, so uh, you can do the man command and then Telnet. If we do that, it'll pull up the manual for this command, in this case, Telnet. Now, there's a lot of stuff here. What I like doing is do a forward slash and then do user. That's essentially a way that we can search through this. And if I use the arrows up and down here, I can also kind of scroll through here and look at this. I see dash L is user. It says specify user as the user to log into the, on the remote system. So if I push a Q here to get out of that, we can do something like telnet dash, actually, you know, let's just try to telnet with just just the IP. I'll show you why that username matters. So we'll specify the IP. Okay, we'll tell that to that. It does look like it connected. We just see it kind of blinking here. Let's give it a second. Okay, so we got this banner that says hack the box and we see meow login. Now, I have no idea what the credentials are. Um, let's try, let's try admin admin maybe or maybe just admin and no password. And that's not gonna work. Let's try uh, administrator. And you see, all I'm trying to do here at this point is just walk through some different potential usernames. Um, you know, I, if I had some other usernames enumerated from a different source, maybe I had a list of emails or something like that, I would have an idea of where to start. We have nothing. So we're trying the, the common ones, admin, administrator, um, root, um, I don't know, uh, you know, web admin. We, could, we There's different versions of variations of these that we could have, and I would recommend even maybe come on, coming up with a list. Uh, in this case, we'll try root, and maybe root for password. Oh, no password. So that's where the weak credentials tag that we saw at the beginning comes into play. So all we did was telnet with the username root into the system. We see that we are logged in because obviously we got this whole banner here but we also see we are root, that's our username, at meow, that's the system we're logged into. Now from there, what we're looking for is a flag. And a flag and hack the box is kind of your proof that you were able to get into that system. Typically there will be a user flag for a user account and a root flag for the root account. In meow though, we just have the root, root flag is what we're looking for. So we'll start looking for it. Let's find out where we're at. So we're going to do PWD. That's, that'll tell us our present working directory where we're at. So we're in slash root, which is actually where a lot of times the root flag is. So let's do an LS. And we see we have a flag.txt there. So to view that, all we have to do is cat. We can use the cat command and then specify the file name. Now a little trick here, you can type in flag.txt that'll work fine. Or you can type in cat F and then you can use tab to autocomplete. So I can tab and that will actually autocomplete the file name for me. From there, we just hit enter and there we go. We get a flag. This is our flag to prove that we have owned this box. That's it, you're done with this box. Now from here, your next step is to head back into the inter interface right over here, go down, answer some of these questions, and then as the final task, be sure to paste in your root flag right here. So that's all you gotta do. Now I know this box was pretty simple. 
but this box was really intended to just get you familiar with connecting to hack the box, getting into the VMs, getting some basic Nmap exposure, because you'll be using it a lot with all these other boxes. I hope you found this video useful. I'll be doing a lot more like this. Obviously, we'll be getting a little bit more into the weeds. This was the easiest box on Hack the Box, in my opinion. So I hope you found it useful. I'll see you in the next video.